Welcome and thank you for being with us today. At this time, we ask that you please turn off your cell phones and we also ask that you refrain from chewing gum during the Mass. Please stand to begin our celebration. that the Savior has been born to us, born of the Virgin, born in Bethlehem, and giving us a light of hope, a light of truth, and a light of promise. We ask the Lord to prepare our hearts to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries of the Holy Eucharist, 
that we might be worthy recipients of the presence of the Lord, not just in our cribs that we celebrate and the, uh, the images that we behold, but also in our hearts, that here he might truly be. Reconozcamos nuestros pecados. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your centiles raise a cry. Together they shout for joy, for they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. At the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and whom sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majestic on high as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you, or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, 
Let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through Him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as the Father's Spirit, only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have received grace in place of grace. Because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. everyone a very happy and merry Christmas for yourselves and for your families and to those who are dear to you. Quisiera tomar el momento para desear felices Navidad. 
Feliz Navidad a todos, las fiestas navideñas y sus familiares. You know, on Christmas, there are four different masses in the Roman Missal. That is, different prayers for the mass at the vigil, for the mass at the midnight, for the mass at dawn, and for the mass during the day. And there's four different Gospels that are read all within this 24-hour period. The Mass at the Vigil is from St. Matthew. The Mass at Midnight is from St. Luke. The Mass at Morning Dawn is also St. Luke. And then Mass of the Day is from the Prologue of St. John. Everywhere that the rite, the Roman rite of the Church is celebrated, these are the order of things. There's a great wisdom here. Because, just to take it and simplify it just a little bit, the account of the birth of Christ we hear and we remember, especially the one that, is, that, was, that was told to us when we were in catechism maybe as, as children, was exactly the one that St. Matthew and St. Luke tell us. That is, that Caesar Augustus had ordered a census and so Joseph had to go to Bethlehem Como decimos, sin ganas, pero ahí iba, no, he had to go because Caesar said so and his wife was expecting. And they looked for a place to stay so that she could give birth, but there was no room at the inn. That's where the custom in so many countries of las posadas comes from. You knock on the door three times and two times the person says, there's no room here until the third time. Then you knock on the door and they let you in, you have tamales. And St. Luke tells us that when the shepherds heard, the angels appeared to them and gave them the announcement that for us is born a Savior. This is all being told from the perspective of those who were there. The memory of Mary, the memory of Joseph are kind of in the accounts of these. These are the events you know, that happened. And they all deeply sort of imply a Savior is born to us. And the angels sing, glory to God in the highest and peace to men of goodwill, which we say in the Gloria. But St. John sort of takes us deeper. You see, this is why there's a progression here. You now the liturgy sort of takes us deeper into this because the Gospels themselves, John is not saying anything different from Matthew or Luke. He's focusing on helping us to understand what really happened. Yes, a child was born and born of the Virgin. But in the cosmic sense, in the big sense of the event that changes the course of history, he says he starts in a different way. He starts like with Genesis. In the beginning was the Word. That is the Word that God speaks that makes everything. And without him nothing was made. This revelation of the mystery of the Father who has a Word and the Word is spoken in eternity, which we profess every time we say the creed on Sunday. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. That's what that means in the second paragraph. The one who is flesh is God from God, the Word. And St. John takes us, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then he goes on, it's kind of a circle that he cycles, and he gets deeper, and then he gets really the the, the central point of the prologue of St. John is, and the Word was made flesh, and he dwelt among us. That's the child. Who is he? Christ Jesus, Son of Mary, Son of the Father. Son of God the Father, Son of Mary. One with God, in the Godhead, but one with us now, because he's one of us now. This is the wonder of the Incarnation, which in a very real sense is the feast of March the 25th. You do realize, of course, that when on March the 25th, the Church celebrates the Annunciation when the angel first appeared to Mary, and there is where the Word became flesh. There's a beautiful church in Nazareth, the Church of the Annunciation, and there's an altar there the crypt, and there in written in Latin is here, here, the Word was made flesh. 
because here was where Mary received the angel and said, let it be as you have said. Because the life of the Son of God in the flesh began in the womb of Mary. Christmas, nine months later, or March the 25th, see how the church works there with the liturgy? He is manifested, that is, he is shown to us. He is born. But for St. John and for the apostolic preaching of the church that is narrated in all the scriptures in the New Testament, it's not just a fact, it's a, it's a mystery that, that, that pulls us in, no? It has to pull us in. That this God, who is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, who doesn't, who, from, on whom everyone depends, all creation, if God should stop thinking about us, we would just disappear and nobody would remember. His thought is what makes us be. That's the word. This God, who is so apart from creation, depends on nothing, needs nothing, and yet is constantly giving. You see, this is the giving of God. This one becomes flesh. St. Paul says it in a slightly different way in his letter to the Philippians. And though he was in the form of God, speaking of Christ, St. Paul, and though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave. A servant and this is what St. Paul says and it's also what St. John is saying he becomes flesh which he empties himself he chooses to express the greatness of his love as one of us not because he had to not because he needed to because we wouldn't get it otherwise because God can talk and talk and talk through the prophets forever and we still wouldn't quite get it unless we see it. Unless the word can be, as St. John says in his first letter, the word we have touched, that we have seen, that we have loved. It's the visibility, the making flesh that makes him accessible to us. It's the God who empties himself for our sake. It's all about his goodness. It's all about what must I do so that I might be able to impart to them something of my love. The word becomes flesh and dwells among them. Though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself. God is the self-emptying one. He does not put on airs. He does not stand above and apart. He jumps into the fray. One of the things that this tells us is that God in the great mystery of his Godhead, God in the great mystery of his love, which is a constant pouring out, a constant generosity, is something that in every act of the man Jesus is shown to us. We see something. We see God in the flesh. And even in the way he comes into the world, just the way he does it, even before he can say anything, in a word that we would understand, He's already saying everything. He's saying everything in the way he comes into the world if we just listen. What is he saying by the way he comes into the world? That I who am the Lord God who made all things and upon whom everything depends upon me in order to be even to exist, I come into a world and I have no place to lay my head because the crib and the manger were all lent to him by somebody of good will whose name is known only to God. That he comes as a vulnerable child, the emptiness of God is to make himself vulnerable to us because he jumps in with both feet into this world of ours. Let's not overly romanticize this. No child in this world survives on its own. So God shows us something about his love precisely by showing himself as one who depends on those around him. He depends on Mary, he depends on Joseph, he depends on some nameless innkeeper, he depends probably on people who brought some stuff by, maybe an extra blanket, maybe a little bit more food. God makes himself dependent on us. 
Don't you see, he's saying, before Jesus can even say a word, he is showing us what this is about. The very venerable practice, you know, manger scenes came into the church through St. Francis' help. You know, St. Francis is the one who helped us because we have to see it. It helps us. God doesn't need it, we do. So I encourage you after Mass, you know, go up, say hello to the baby Jesus. This is a very Catholic thing. And take the children. Because what he's showing us is that he can move us. He can move us to respond to his vulnerability. That's the purpose of the incarnation of the God who empties himself and comes to a world that is quite hostile to him. He has no place. He had no place to be born that was his own. He didn't even have a tomb that was his own to be buried in. You know, the distance from there, the manger to the cross, is not that far. It's the same God who in Christ Jesus shows his desire to elicit from us some response. I come to you as one who can thirst. I come to you as one who can hunger. I come to you as one who doesn't even have a place to lay his head. And can you respond to me? Because the God who is a fullness of generosity becomes empty so that he could move us in some way to experience this kind of generosity. God needs us in Christ's flesh. So the incarnation, the coming of the word in the flesh, the God who empties himself and takes the form of a servant is a provocation. It's the provocation of his birth that is also the same provocation as his cross. Look at me, I am one of you. Can you respond to me with some bit of compassion? Because it's the movement of the heart where charity dwells that actually responds to the Christ who suffers, to the Christ who's cold, to the Christ who has nowhere to lay his head. And it's that response. Eyes of faith see who he is. A heart of love responds to him. Because salvation comes to the world by the movement of love, not by faith alone. It is not enough to believe God became one of us. We must learn from him how to love. This too is the Catholic faith. Es el movimiento del amor que nos salva, no? It's the movement of love that saves us. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit. It urges us. And so the most important question for us, although the, the world will not tell you this, but the Gospels make it clear, they shout it to us, the most important question for us is, where are you, Lord, that I might respond to you? You who have given me everything, who have emptied yourself, who show yourself crucified, where are you that I might touch you? And he gives us the answer plain and clear. It's in Matthew 25. Whatever you did to the least of mine, you do to me. It's that simple. It's no secret. But sometimes we act like we've never heard it before. We, I get his bondedle. No, you have to answer to him. Respond to him. And it's in the person next to you. It's in the person maybe you've been grumpy at for the last 35 years. Porque si somos, no? It's the rancor that needs to be let go. It's the forgiveness that needs to be given. It's the glass of water given to somebody who's thirsty. It's the, it's the bit of clothing given to someone who's cold. There are 10,000 people in Reynosa today who are cold. And in Matamoros, no roof over their head. Let us not say we do not know where Christ is. We do. He asks.
asks us to respond. And then we can be a part of his self-emptying, just a little bit of self-emptying. Un poquito de entrega that then fills us with something of God. That's why he does it. And as St. John would have us remember, that's why this gospel is read today on Christmas Day, the fullness of the light. Enter into this gift of God's flesh and respond to him. Kiss his feet when you can as a child and kiss his feet when you can on the cross and serve one another in the generosity of Christ. That's why he comes. But it's a grace to move us. No heart moves to God or to the service of one who suffers in this world without a poke from the Holy Spirit. So pray for that. It's not something we do because we're smart and strong. It's something that comes from God if we open our hearts to it. Today is the day to say, Lord, open my heart. Change this heart of stone. Because we all have it, at least a little bit. And make it flesh again. The same flesh that you became. Flesh which in your love you have redeemed by your coming and born of, the, born of the Virgin, by your public preaching and miracles, by your death on the cross, and by your rising on the third day. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to people of goodwill. Let us be the people. Let us profess the faith we have received from the apostles. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our petitions to God the Father, for he hears us through Christ his Son. For the people of God in every land, for believers and unbelievers, that God's world bring light and life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For local, national, international leaders, that their vision make this world a better place, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the children of the world, especially those in need of food, shelter, clothing, and education, that generous hands reach out to care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick members of this community of faith, that they be comforted and encouraged in God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer for young people to hear God's call to priesthood and religious life, and for those seeking marriage that God may lead them in their choices, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially for Jesus Sanchez, for whom this Mass is offered, may God give them re eternal rest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, you know our needs even before we ask them. Hear our prayers spoken and silent and grant us what we need through your beloved Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his public church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts 
we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints of whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Mario Alberto, our auxiliary bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, together we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, and glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with the Spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. It's not.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not Lord, willing that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
collection is to help with the expenses of the ongoing projects here at the Basilica. Thank you for your generosity. O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so we may be the giver even so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before I give the final blessing, let me just wish once again everyone a very happy Christmas time. Remember, Christmas is more than a day, as to una Una temporada, no, it's a time. It's a, so we have uh, many days to continue celebrating. I want to, uh, quisiera pues uh, desear a todos una, unas fiestas navideñas muy uh, de paz y de mucha alegría. Un aplauso al niño Jesús. Let's clap for the Lord Jesus, no? Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. 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 May God, who willed that the great joy of his Son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earth and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make your sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Alma, Redentoris Mater.
hacer, que per mia celi porta males, este la maris, su curre cadentí, su yere cui cura populo, tu cuello natura mirante, tu santo genitor. San Juan del Valle, pray for us.